Hey there. So, I'm Slither. You probably know that now because you've been watching these videos and this is like the 20th or something like that. Uh, thanks for watching them. Makes me feel wonderful. Uh, this video is going to be on the Puppet Queue. Um, the Puppet Queue is a relatively new feature and so I wanted to go over its usage and when you should and should not use it and things that you should do in the lead up to using it. Um, basically the problem that we're trying to solve is that there are not always GMs available to puppet or take control of the NPCs that you might be talking to. So typically the process is you need to talk to an NPC uh, in person and you show up and you try to talk to them. You wait a few minutes, you see if you get a response. Maybe you try to talk to them again, saying some sort of leading information like, hey, I'd like to talk to you about the application I put in two weeks ago to join the With More Justice Force. Or, hey, buddy, I dropped my car off here a week ago, and I'm wondering if you've fixed it yet and what the price is. Those indicators allow pretty much any GM, uh, whether they are familiar with the past role play or not, to have a general idea of what you're looking to do and what you're looking to speak to this NPC about. But if there are no GMs around, then your message goes out into the ether and we don't see it. So you have to come back again and you have to come back again and you have to come back again and hopefully a GM is eventually on. This can be a somewhat frustrating process because you're not really aware of when a GM is available or not. Um, <clears throat> you can type at who and see if there's any GMs online, but that doesn't mean that they're available. They could be engaged in other role play. They could be doing one of the many other tasks that GMs have to do, or they could be splitting their time between coding or um, <clears throat> updating the website or answering X helps or other uh, help related questions. So other ways that you could potentially talk to an, or request information from an NPC would be over grid mail. Maybe you've sent several grid mails and you haven't gotten a response, and maybe you have asked for them, say you're tr you only have their sick alias and you've just said like, I'm looking to talk to, you know, Palmer on the sick many times, but haven't gotten a response. Um, in the past, we've had you leave player facing notes or player side notes with at add note, which would say like, hey, I'm trying to get a hold of this NPC and here are the steps that I've taken to try to get a hold of them. Uh, and hopefully a GM would be able to get back to you or see that note and know that you're looking for that NPC. That is still not a very optimal process because I might see that and then another GM might see that and we both might reach out to you at different times even though I already handled it. Um, but because it was a note, maybe they didn't see the note saying that I'd handled it, right? So what the puppet queue does is after you've, like when you're supposed to use it, is after you've made an attempt, or hopefully multiple attempts, to talk to an NPC either over grid mail, over sick, or in person, you can use at, the at sign, request dash puppet to open up a, a special interface which will guide you through the steps of letting us know that you're attempting to speak to an NPC. So it guides you through several, it asks you several questions. One is like, what is this puppet? Who, who is the person you're trying to talk to, right? You might not know their actual name, um, but you have some alias or some information about who you're trying to talk to. Um, you, it will ask you like what this is relating to. Is it a faction thing? Is it a job thing? Is it just a role play thing? You want to meet up with them and touch base and chat and say hi. Um, is it informational? Is it like a fixer type thing? Things like that. It'll ask you who they are and then it will go through a couple other questions and then it'll give you, you know, you'll ask first, you'll be asked for a subject and the subject should be brief but informative like need to talk to ops about pending case. Um, and then it will ask you for a body. And the body is where you, it's really important that in this body, not only do you say what you need to talk to them about, but how you've tried to talk to them in the past already, uh, and what information you left them with regards to contacting you. 
So it's all fine and good that you went and stood in front of Buddy 17 times and tried to talk to him about your car. But if you didn't say, hey, uh, you can contact me at this grid alias or this sick alias and at this Progea number, then how the fuck is he going to get in contact with you, right? And if we don't know that you left him a sick alias or a grid phone, it would be un-IC of us, it would be meta of us, of Buddy to just know your Progea number or know your sick alias, right? We don't want to have to go hunting you down. As fun as that might be, we don't want to have to hire someone in character to go track you down and then return to us with that information just so we can get your phone number uh, and not be meta about it, right? So it's really important that in this body you say, I left him this Progea number, I left him this grid alias, and I left him this sick alias. And not only is it important for you to write that, but it's important for you to actually do that in real life or in real in character life. Um, if you sent a grid mail, include the Progea number and sick alias that you can be contacted at. If you're talking to them in person, say, hey, I know you're busy, but uh, here's my sick alias, my grid alias, and my phone number. Contact me through whatever one of these that you want whenever you have a chance. Um, and if you're requesting this over the over public sick, like if, they're a, a, if all they are is an alias, you can say, hey, uh, Palmer, contact me at this alias or call me at this number. If you don't want to give your Progea number, just say this alias or this grid alias. Um, sick or grid alias. And then include that stuff in the body of your request. Now, that will allow us to know that you're attempting to talk to this NPC. When you're online, we will get uh, semi-consistent notifications of who's in the puppet queue, who, who needs puppets, who's requested puppets, and we will be able to look at that information and to digest it and to decide if we have time to puppet for you. Um, when you're not online, we're not getting notified. So it's important that you be online if you expect to be contacted, obviously. Um, GMs do have the ability to see uh, requests from specific people that aren't online, but it just doesn't pop up in our, like, automatic reminders that we have on the admin side for like these five people are waiting or have puppet requests. Um, some other restrictions are you can only submit two at a time and you can't edit them. Um, so if you have submitted two and you need to submit a third, you need to wait for one to be marked as finished, right? So the, the process would be um, the admin sees it's in the, the puppet queue. They fulfill the request by puppeting. They mark it as done and then it's no longer in your puppet queue, right? Or in your request queue. So you'd be able to submit another one. You can also cancel requests. Like if a GM forgets to mark it as complete, you can cancel it. Um, and if you realize that it's no longer relevant, like say you really needed to talk to Zanigra um, because of some snake business, and then uh, all of a sudden that became irrelevant, like somebody else told you, I already talked to him, he knows uh, what you're gonna tell him, you can cancel the request. You do that through the same menu uh, at request dash puppet. Um, so you can only have two pending and you can't edit them. If you need to edit them, then what you should do is delete your request and resubmit it um, because that's it's too difficult to make it editable. Sorry, I, I'm not interested in putting that much effort into it. it. Took me about five hours to code it and write the help files and update our help files and post BGBB stuff and do player feedback and player testing and then write admin help files. And then if you include this video, five and a half hours. So um, it should be pretty solid, and I hope you like it. We're open to feedback. There's a forum post about it in the new features and game, game fixes, bug fixes and new features, whatever it is, uh, section on the BGBB. So please offer feedback. We can expand the areas that you can like tag things as, like job and fixer and et cetera. We can update the examples if they seem to be unclear, and we can update the help files if they don't seem informative enough. I would say this, there is no guarantee that putting a request in is going to result in a puppet. Sorry, it, sometimes we're busy. After two weeks, around two weeks, you're, uh, it will be purged. So like if you need a puppet and you don't sign in for a week and a half, we're never going to see that request really. Um, and maybe we don't get to it in like the remaining three days and it's going to get um, pruned. You can then resubmit it. This is basically so that People, A, so it doesn't take up space forever. B, um, so that if people sign, don't sign in for a while, then their irrelevant puppet requests go away. 
um, because something you need, if you didn't say, if you got busy in real life and you needed to sign in, or you didn't sign in for a month, then the stuff you needed to do a month ago probably isn't relevant or has the relevancy has changed and you need to update your requests. So feel free to update requests by deleting them and re-adding them. There is a limit of two. Um, and hopefully this streamlines the process and makes it a lot easier and more straightforward and there isn't a million notes about things that you guys need, um, etc. If you have any questions, feel free to X out uh, or post on the forums. So thanks for watching and I hope you like the new feature.